Okay, in this video, we are going to be solving a bunch of harder trigonometric equations solely using the graph. I'm going to do it all by hand with a bit, little bit of help from the calculator, but not on the graph drawing, and just show you how easy it is to come up with all possible solutions for trig equations. So let's get started. I've got five examples, uh, including some weird negative ones, some ones where we don't have theta as the argument all the time um, by popular request. So let's get started with the first one. Okay, let's start off with sine theta equals five over seven. So I've got my sine graph drawn out here. I've only got it between zero and 360 because that's the range I'm dealing with. And that's usually the range that I'll be dealing with here. So zero to 360 or zero to two pi. And we are going to find all the solutions to sine theta is five over seven. So I'm gonna start off using my calculator to find my principal value. Remember the principal value is if I simply type in the inverse sine of five divided by seven into my calculator, what do I get? Well, I get 45 point, 45.6, more or less, 5, 8, but 45.6 degrees. As soon as I've got my principal value, I'm going to find it on my x-axis and plot it in. So I know that my peak is gonna be at 90, so 40 is going to be about here. So I've got 40 about here, so I'm going to draw, or 45.6, I'm going to draw a lovely straight line with a ruler up to my sine graph, or down to, which we'll see in a minute, if it's below. Then I'm going to draw a nice horizontal line across my entire graph. And my question is, where does it intersect? It intersects once there, as we know, and it intersects once here. Nothing going on over here, my graph is down here. And then I'm going to draw a nice another line down here, and this is the x value I'm looking for. Now I know that this is 45.6, and I know that this here is perfectly symmetric. So this distance is 45.6, this distance is 45.6, so my other option is 180 minus 45.6, which is 134. Point four. Yes. Nice and simple. Graph is brilliant because we can immediately see there's only two solutions. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now I've got cos of theta equals a minus root two over two. So this time I've got a negative in here. Still working between zero and 360, which I've drawn here with the best cos graph in the world. Look at that, that is horrific. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine, it's functional. Between zero and 360, minus root two over two. Once again, I'm going to use my calculator to find the principal value. So I'm going to cos inverse of minus root two over two, and I'm going to get that as a nice even 135 degrees. Once again, I'm going to find this on my x-axis. So 90s here, 180 is where my peak is on my cos graph. So 135 is gonna be about there. Draw my line up or down to find my graph. Well, it's down here this time. Draw a nice horizontal line the whole way across. And between zero and 360, where does it hit? Hits twice, once here and once here. So I'm gonna draw another perfectly vertical line. Look at that, like a ruler and everything. Straight up to my x-axis. How do I find this? Well, I'm gonna use the symmetry between 90 and 270. This distance between 90 and 135 is 45. Yep, second guessing myself. Which means the distance here is going to be 45. So my other angle is gonna be 270 minus 45, which is 225. And once again, with the graph, immediately I'm seeing there's only two values, but this time they are negative. For this example, I've got a lovely tan graph here that is quite nice, actually, as far as I'm concerned, and slightly trickier in two ways. First of all, my range has now changed. I'm no longer looking for 0 to 360. I'm looking for minus 180 to 180. So I'm immediately taking into account 
the left hand side of my graph, which is slightly newer. I've also got a bit more going on up here. I've got tan squared of theta equals nine, not just tan theta equals something. And I put this in just to show when sometimes we have to solve twice. What I mean by that is if I solve this for tan theta, which I need to do, I need to get it as a cos sine or tan equals something, well, I'm gonna to wanna to square root both sides and get that tan of theta is equal to three, right? No, tan theta is plus or minus three. Always remember that. If we are square rooting an integer, it is going to be plus or minus the answer. Always, every time. And it'll be in there to throw us off. Which means I'm going to need to do my process twice. Once for tan theta is equal to three, and once for tan theta is equal to a minus three. So let's start off with tan theta equals three. Step one again, get my calculator and get my principal value for tan. So tan to the minus one of three gives me 71.56. Now, once again, I'm going to find 71.56 on my graph. Now I know that I've got an asymptote here at 90. So 71 is going to be about here. 71.56 is going to be about here. Drawn a line up to this graph. And once again, I'm going to draw my horizontal line across. If it was below, if it was over here, I would draw it down. I'm going to draw it here and across. And I've drawn this deliberately between minus 180 and 180 so that we don't get confused. And I devise that's how you draw your graphs as well. And I have two intersections, one here and one here. Now, how do we then find this value? It doesn't really look very symmetric, like the sine and the cos, but of course it is. Yeah, I know this value here is minus 180 and it's when tan is zero, which means just by looking at it, this distance here is 71.56, which is the same as this distance here. So my other option is minus 180 plus 71.56, and it is too late in the evening for me to be bothered with that. Minus 180 plus 71.56 minus 108.44. Definitely could have done that in my head, but you know what? Got to calculate it, use it. And once again, I know I'm finished with this because all of a sudden I've only got two crosses on my graph. It only intersects my graph twice, so I'm good to go. Switch to red for the next bit. Once again, exactly the same process, but with tan theta is minus three. Grab my calculator. Inverse tan of minus three is minus 71.6 or minus 71.56, I'll keep consistent. Makes sense. The negative value is this negative value. So what am I gonna do? Find minus, minus 71.56 on my graph. I know my asymptote here is 90, so minus 71.56 is gonna be about here. This time, there's nothing above me. I'm gonna have to go below, draw it straight down, draw my line across, where does it hit my graph? Once there, I've already got, and once here as well. Now, let's have a look at some more symmetry. Well, I've got the distance to the next point that the graph hits zero, which is 71.56, which is gonna be this distance here from my point, if I draw it up to when I next hit zero. So that distance and that distance are gonna be the same. So if that distance is the same as 71.56, my other value is 180 minus 71.56. I'll do this in my head this time, just to prove I can, 109.44. 108.44, it's deliberate, making sure you're on your toes. Unqualified. Yeah. Okay, 
Now, anyway, we've hit all of our targets. There's nothing else inside this range. So I've got one, two, three, four options. One, two, three, four. I have solved my equation. Okay, last one, throwing in a new element that we haven't looked at yet, which is when my argument, which means the thing being acted upon within the function, is not just theta. Now, there is a very simple way of solving this, of dealing with this. I'm just going to label, I've got my 0 to 360. I've gone back to 0 to 360 to avoid me drawing graphs on both sides, but of course this works with any range, any graph, anywhere. First things first, I'm going to want to sort this out. I don't want it to read tan of half theta or sine of 7 theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as tan of x is equal to minus 1 over root 3. And I am bearing in mind that x is equal to theta over 2, to half theta. So I'm keeping this in the back of my head at all times. But if we just replace this, replace that, we're good to go. Next thing I need to do is replace any other thetas in my equation with an x. Well, there's not one in the equation, but there's one in my range, which is equally as important. So I'm going to replace my theta here with an x, which means I need to replace my 0 and my 360. But what with? Well, my x values are theta divided by 2, so these are thetas, so I just need to divide them by 2. Now my 0 can stay as a 0 because it divides by 2 and it doesn't care. But my 360 is now going to become 180. And I'm simply looking for values of theta, or sorry, values of x that are within 0 and 180. Because when we resolve it again at the end, well, you can probably notice when I solve for theta, I'm just going to multiply everything by 2. So if something was 180, at the end I'm going to multiply it by 2 and I get 360, and that's as high as I can go. So, we've changed my domain, which means now I'm only concentrated on... Oh, get rid of my lovely graph. I'm only concentrated on up to here. On my graph. And I can solve as usual. Step 1, principal value. Inverse tan minus 1 over root 3 is minus 30. So my first x value, uh, we'll do this in green actually, stay consistent. My first x value is minus 30 degrees, which is unfortunate because I started the graph from zero and I now see that was a mistake. I'm going to leave this in because that's, you know, an easy mistake to make that we do want the graph a little bit further this way to deal with the minus 30. So, I've got to draw the tan graph again for the fifth time today. That's fine. So, I'm going to go... Whoop, whoop, and that'll do. That's 180. I've got an asymptote over here at minus 90. So, minus 30 on my graph is going to be here which hits my line here. I can draw my line over, and I'm only actually hitting it once. Why don't I care about this value? Well, because this is out of my range. I only care about 0 to 180 degrees. So this value here, yeah, it's nice, it's minus 30, but I don't care. It's not within my range, so I'm ignoring it. The one I do care about, however, is over here. Once again, by symmetry, it is 30 away from my graph hitting zero, which is here. So it's 30 this way, so it is 150 degrees. So my x value is minus 130 and 150. I, of course, do not care about my 130. It is outside of my range, and I am done. Except I'm not, because I've been asked to solve for theta. So, luckily, I've got a nice little equation here that I can throw things back into. x is theta over 2. So theta equals 2 times x, and theta equals 2 times 150 is 300 degrees. And it's that simple. 
And you'll see why we halved this range, because now I've only got one value, which is up at 300, which is, of course, almost out of my range. So it's a good job that I changed that. So yeah, hope this one helped. Just a very quick one, go, not very quick, it's been a while, but just a nice quick video going through some of these harder functions. Always use a graph, don't use a cast diagram, or whatever you call it, because cast diagram's weird. I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs>